fighting back. We're fighting and we're winning. Yeah. I mean, against all odds. The water protectors here are not only seeking to save the purity of their own water, but remind us that life has an intrinsic value beyond a monetary value. And perhaps in many ways, that's the most important lesson the resistors here have to impart to the rest of us, that we must honor the sacred. We must finally see all forms of resistance as a battle to protect the sources of life itself. I was born with the resistance blood. We've always come from a long lineage of native people that opposed the colonization and uh, have always emphasized the need to, to be uh, resilient. Tom Goldtooth is a Native American environmental leader who fought the Keystone XL pipeline. I see that there's a time for um, what we call um, the, the seventh generation, the seventh fire, um, when uh, our, our young people are going to be stepping up and, uh, and that it's a time for us to see that the lifestyle that we have that's been a lifestyle of separation from nature, a lifestyle of separation from that spiritual creative principle that uh, is part of the natural laws, that uh, people are going to start to come back, come back to Mother Earth. And we see the signs already of where for an example, an economic system that thrives on unlimited growth, that doesn't value uh, that life cycles that we talk about as native indigenous peoples, that that economic system is barely surviving right now yeah. on a thread. Yeah. It's called capitalism. Uh, and so that means that we need to look deep, not only as native people within those teachings we have, but uh, also we need to look deep as two-legged people of all cultures, as humanity, uh, about uh, defining and evaluating what our relationship is collectively with that sacredness of Mother Earth and Father Sky. How do you handle a group this big with the kinds of obvious tensions that always come with collective action like this? What we've been experiencing the past couple of months when this call of action went out is the challenges of the escalations of thousands of people who have come here. Uh, not only our native indigenous peoples, but uh, a lot of the descendants of the settlers, the colonizers who come here. Um, and it's, it's very challenging. And within that is woven a lot of the social justice issues, a lot of the isms of civilization. Um, as native indigenous people, one of the big issues that uh, uh, we're addressing right now as a symptom of colonization is it's called internalized oppression. How does that manifest itself? It manifests itself in some really frustrated, angry, unhealthy ways. It's kind of a love-hate relationship for the colonizer and with the colonizer. And how, to, to give me examples. An example of that is like, for an example, um, a tribal nation wanting to better itself economically. So it embraces uh, an economic system that's based upon capitalism without giving us the freedom to be able to define what is economics to us. And then we start hiring consultants to help us. And those consultants generally are not our own native indigenous people. So it's, it's uh, the great white hope kind of a phenomenon. So I was part of that generation that uh, kind of emerged from this fire that created a lot of toxic ashes, you could say. Even activists bring white entitlement into this. White privilege is a very strong. Uh -huh. And that's not, that's not my responsibility. And that's why we need uh, white allies. We need white uh, friends who understand what uh, we are talking about because then it's their responsibility to work with their own to, to undo racism. It's a powerful, it's a powerful uh, uh, instrument that is being used to divide people and to force us to work in silos. We've been very successful within our network and uh, other pipeline battles by uh, uh, creating um, 
um, alignment and building bridges uh, between white and native. And an example of that was the Cowboy Indian Alliance that uh, we utilized in, uh, in winning uh, this campaign against TransCanada Keystone XL Pipeline. Uh, the white farmers and ranchers of Nebraska uh, started to understand on how they can align themselves to the Indian rights issue because we have the same concern as the protection of the, of the water and uh, um, creating a, a safe future, a healthy future for our children. There's actually a midwifery here set up over there. Here's a midwife. Has anyone given birth? One baby has been right? born in camp already. Wow. There's a vibration coming out from this encampment that's resonating through uh, the skin of Mother Earth. Uh, it's a vibration that's going into the waters underneath the surface. The groundwater talks to each other. The aquifers talk to each other. That resonates throughout all people who have gathered here. And the animals and the birds, the birds are flying south now. They're taking everything that they're experiencing here in their travels in Canada. They, they know a lot. They're going to be talking to their other relatives of the bird nation in the south. So this messaging is going on. This is the last battle in the struggle against colonization, not only of people, but of the earth. It is a battle indigenous communities have been fighting for over four centuries. And it is a battle that if they lose, we all lose. And if they win, we make possible life itself.